further ado, right now, we are going to transition to the man of the hour, Jacob Malherby. And I'm super, super excited about this because we're going to go through how to go big on social media. So Jacob, thank you so much for taking the time. He's the founder of X Social Media. What can all the attorneys here do first from the thinking perspective to go big on social media ads? First, I want to tell you that my business, like everybody that is on here, was a small business starting out. We are only five years old. And just like you guys have been preaching, it's all about bringing value, bringing transparencies to your clients. In this case, my clients is, of course, the lawyers. So luckily, I went in to my agency with the mindset of helping people. I started with the BP oil spill and just help people. And then once it became so big that I needed more attorneys to get involved, I simply wrote this very easy book, The Facebook Effect for Lawyers, that teaches lawyers how to do it themselves. How can they do what I do themselves? Not needing me. And just like you said in your commentary, we want everybody to do it themselves because if they can do it themselves, once they come to scale, they're still going to need me because once you start scaling on something like Facebook and Instagram, it's all about the data that you possess, what you have already been through. So before we wrote that book, we were spending about $7 million a year on Facebook and Instagram. And the year after the book, we were spending $50 million on Facebook and Instagram. And we are now doing that for the second year in a row. We're going to be over $50 million. What Andy was touching on earlier is super important when you get to Facebook. So you make your video. You come to Facebook, and now the important thing is your ideal client. Who is it? What geographic area is that client located in? Could be 10 miles around your office, but figure out, is it a man? Is it a woman? Could it both be a man or a woman? Is there an age group bracket that you want in there? Were these people maybe going through bankruptcy like we talked about? Do they maybe have some side effects that you can target? Is this high net individuals you can target? And once you set your basic demographics up and geographics of where you want to be, then it comes time to trust the Facebook algorithm. So to understand the Facebook algorithm, it goes something like this. Let's show your ad to a thousand people. And just so everybody can understand that this is for everybody, Showing your ad to a thousand people cost around $25 on Facebook. So once you show your ad to a thousand people, Facebook will realize who is engaging with your ad, who's watching the whole video, for example, who's liking, who's sharing, who's making comments. And those people are the people that are most interested in your content. So once they have gone through that learning phase to figure out who wants to see this content, then they start optimizing the content to the same type of people that already engaged. So your ad will become better and better over time as the Facebook algorithm learns what it is that your content is geared for. So as an example, I think you have all seen in the news about the Boy Scout abuse case. That's the type of space that I work a lot in. We signed up 10,000 of the 90,000 Boy Scouts that filed claims over here. And that is done by Facebook realizing we're looking for a man. The man is probably over 30 years old. He can be all over this country, but he was in the Boy Scouts. Once they find the people that fits that profile, they will just keep showing it to more and more people. Your price will lower over time, the more data that you accumulate for each project. And you can apply that to any niche of the law. It could be bankruptcy, it could be divorce, it could be real estate. It works the same way. It's all about data. The common question that comes to me is when you start out, how do you get data? Where does data come from? You of course start off by reading my book that will give you a how to, but then what it comes down to is you most likely today have a website set up. So what you do is you set up a Facebook ad account 
you get the pixel. So pixel, what is that? It's a little bitty string of code that goes in on your website. And now it starts tracking who comes to your website. Who is it that engages with your website? You can do two things with that information. You can retarget those people over on Facebook and Instagram. Example, if you are a divorce attorney, you could target them with, hey, I, I saw you came by my website. Why don't you come back? Watch this video. This might pertain to you. Or, or some other offer that you might want to show them on Facebook. This will get them back to your website. But what you can also use this data for is building up the audience of who you're looking for. Are you attracting the man in the divorce? Are you attracting the, the lady in the divorce? And then you build up your audience from your website. That's your start. Then you start showing videos on Facebook. And now all of a sudden, Facebook tracks who will watch five seconds of the video, who will watch 30 seconds of the video, and who will watch the whole video to the end. So now you have an audience of who is engaging mostly with your content. And you can then take that audience and say to Facebook, hey, here's the people that watch the 100% of my video. Now give me a lookalike audience. So people that are the same as the people that has already watched it. So that means Facebook can give you 2 million people that looks the same as the people that has already liked your video. Now, let's talk a little bit about lookalikes so, so you guys understand it. I think you have all seen on websites where you have the like, the share button on websites. You go read a new story and there's like and share and all this on Facebook. So what that really is, is a Trojan horse that basically tracks you wherever you go on the internet and keeps up with your interest. It then goes into buckets over on Facebook. So maybe you are diabetic, so you go into diabetic audience. Maybe you're researching cancer, so you go into cancer audience. Maybe you're researching divorce, so you go into divorce bucket. And once they have put you in all these different buckets of what your interests are, they can then find people that have similar interests and make lookalike audiences of it. You can still, on a lookalike audience, put it down to a certain geographical area that you want to show it in with the lookalike audience. You can even do demographics on a lookalike audience, meaning I only want to show it to the women that fits this pro profile. So there's a lot of things that can be done with data on Facebook, but the most important thing is to realize that Facebook's algorithm is a lot smarter than you or me and let Facebook figure out for you who is your right audience. They look at many more data points that we can ever look at. So maybe- so a couple to... questions. Go um, ahead, Bill. I, I know, I talk a lot. No, I have five questions that what I want to pull out of you, if you had to give your number one set of principles for each of these five questions, what would they be? The first question that a lot of lawyers right now have is conversions, meaning it seems based on you know, I'm sure you've heard this too, that a lot of lawyers believe, and it's true that you can get a lower lead cost on Facebook. However, the problem is taking it from a lead to a signed case. So talk to us about after you get a click or a lead, what's the top principle you've learned to turning that into a case? Sometimes you have to say stuff that is not what the lawyers want to hear, but uh, here it comes. So it's very important that your funnel is set up correctly, right? So you can either use the Facebook lead ads, which has a lot of problems in themselves. I'll come back to that. But you can also use a landing page setup where you could use Unbound, Instapage is platforms for landing pages. So you try and get them over on a landing page. And what we do is we ask them a few questions once they get to this landing page. Did you have this cancer? Did you take this drug? Do you already have an attorney? And any of those questions can be a disqualifier on the lead. So we try and sort a little bit on the leads to make sure that they are qualified for what we do before we send it to a professional call center. 
The problem that happens on scale is when law firms think that their paralegals or whoever in the law firm is their so-called call center can handle it. That is a big, big mistake. And, and that's where we see a lot of conversions fall. So when these leads come in, they need to be called within the first five minutes. Leads come in 24-7. Of course, there are some rules. You can't call after 10 p.m. and stuff like that at night, but you still have to call these leads back as soon as they come in, at least up till 10 o'clock at night. And then whatever comes in overnight, you call first thing in the morning. Now, you never, well, in some cases, you get hold of the lead on that first call, but many times it takes five, seven, eight calls at different times of the day to get hold of these people and to talk to these people and to qualify them further. I would say on everything we do, you would expect at least a 20% conversion rate starting off, going as high as 50% conversion rate. We were doing Purdue opioid bankruptcy cases earlier this year where we signed up 60,000 clients and they signed up at 28% and we got over 200,000 leads just to get to that number. So it's very important that you spend the money and contract with a call center. I know that people have different prices on call centers. I particularly use a call center that is in Texas. They charge $35 per lead we send over there. So if we convert at 20%, it'd be about 140 per sign case that you add to the advertising cost. But it is my recommendation that you find good 24 seven call center that can handle your volume and can go after all leads that come into your firm. It is not always a good idea to do it in-house. Now, if your firm is very small and your ad budget is very small and you maybe have a couple of leads coming in every day, then maybe I'm wrong, but once you start scaling up, you will lose if you don't have a professional call center. I will just write legal conversions. Yeah, and so uh, he just typed it in legal conversion center. It's the call center in Texas that he uses. So you yeah. just gave hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions perhaps in value right there. Uh, just answering so many questions that I've had lingering around Facebook ads because it seems that the response rate is lower, but it's not. It comes down to the follow-up process in the speed of response. So that certainly answered the question. One big kind of elephant in the room, I think is typically if a lawyer wants to go big on social media ads, ads getting disapproved. Like for example, if a personal injury lawyer includes the word personal injury or lawyer in an ad, chances are the ad's not gonna get approved. And what I'm curious is what are the principles that you've learned about applying to Facebook's policies, especially in niches like criminal and and PI where it's clearly not Facebook's favorite type of ad to show. Always speak in the third person, meaning people that were charged with a DUI can now get help from us. You know, always talk in the third person whenever you write your ad. Always make sure that images has no clear skin, meaning showing any skin of your body, because that sometimes goes to a perfect body image. I would say once you have the third person as the writing, you have an image that is, I prefer to have people in my images, people get attracted to or not attracted to that, that they see something going on that pertains to their story of where they are at, what their problems are right now. Uh, what Andy was talking about uh, early on doing the videos is the same thing we do is we try to find what is the biggest problem in this person's life right now. And we try to connect with that and say, hey, I know this happened to you. And I know you think that this was your body doing that to you. But I'm here to tell you that it could be that you got this type of cancer because you used Roundup or because you took Santac. 
And all of a sudden that self doubt in, oh, this is my body and I'm getting old. All of a sudden they're, they can go after a company and say, oh yeah, I took Santec for five years and that's why I now have this style of cancer. So all of a sudden that self doubt and not understanding what I call cause and effect, right? They took some drug and the effect was they got cancer. This is what people don't understand, right? They don't understand that there's a lot of lawyer things that, that, that regular people just don't get, right? So we try to explain that to them. And once they figure it out, I know in PI people, they go and search five, six lawyers to find out who should they sign up with. But in what I do, once you show them the solution to the problem that they're having right now, they will sign up right away. They will go with you because you were the one that told them. They discovered what they discovered because you had put a video out that explained the problem.